Hello, thank you for watching my channel today. My name's Sarah and my channel is called Your True Chef. Today I'm doing a try a chapter unhaul challenge. So I have picked a selection of books from my shelf which I'm either not sure what they're about or they haven't got very good ratings on Goodreads or I'm just not that fussed about reading them. I'm going to read the first chapter and I'm going to come back with my thoughts. The first one I'm going to read a chapter of is this one, The Red Tent by Anita Diamond. I knew this one sounded, um, it's set in like biblical times and I thought it sounded like really different. I picked it up for free but I have no idea if I want to read it so let's give it a try. Okay so I've read the first chapter of The Red Tent which is more of an introduction rather than a chapter. It's um it's basically like the yeah it's the prologue. Um so I've the next chapter was thirty pages, which I didn't want to read thirty pages. Um so I then just sort of had a flick through the book and read sections here and there. Can I see? Um so it's basically it's set in like Old Testament times, which I've never read a book set then. And um it's set it's like Jacob and his four wives and their children, like the like the collective mothers basically of all these children. And this is Dina's story, who's the youngest child. And it seems like she's had like quite a lot of bad things happen to her, which is really kind of glossed over in the Bible. Um and it's the bits I read are a lot about kind of bearing children and um sort of um herbs and ceremonies and so it does sound interesting, but it's got good reviews on Goodreads, but I just didn't grab me like reading it. It seemed a little bit like it could be a bit like um, Silence of the Girls. Um, it seemed a little bit kind of like that in the way it's like a female retelling. But I've read some reviews that said the characters were all a bit underdeveloped, and I can kind of see that from the bits I read through that I don't know that it's going to de delve much into like them as people i don't know but i know that if i keep this even though it sounds good if i keep it i know it's going to languish so i'm going to give this one away the next one i've got is this one which is small wars by sadie james so this is um following a soldier called hal um and he goes to cyprus in the war and his wife and twin daughters join him there's an emergency on the island and there's like a cypriot greek war um, yeah, so I was given this one by somebody who thought I'd like it, and um, we'll see if I do. So I finished the first one of this, this was another prologue. Um, this was following Hal and his best friend James, and they were at like a parade to celebrate the end of World War Two, and he had met a girl called Clara, who's his friend's sister, um, and they sort of committed to each other. Um, it didn't hold my interest, so I actually didn't really, if I never read the next part, it wouldn't really um, phase me at all, so that one's a goner. So next, I am going to try one that hasn't got very good reviews on Goodreads. Um, this was one I think I got, yeah, for a pound in a charity shop. Um, and this is Tangerine by Christine Mangan. So, this is about a woman called Alice who is living in, who's arrived at Tangier with her husband. And she sees, um, an old friend who she hasn't seen for a long time. Um, yeah, that's all I know so far. So something about um, the sort of, they've, I think they've been friends, they've had some sort of falling out or something's happened and now they've gone to Morocco and bumped into each other. So let's have a, a see if I like this one. So <clears throat> this one started with a prologue again. Um, this The prologue seemed like it was the lady who I presume is... Um, Alice, the protagonist, and she it looked like she was in bed in a, maybe a care home with dementia. Um, and so I, I was enjoying the, the prologue and I then read the first chapter because I wanted to carry on and I really liked it. So 
um, we're, we're following Alice, who's just met a man and married him really quickly when she's about um, 18 or 19. She doesn't know him very well and he's persuaded her to move out to um, Tangier in Morocco with one of his friends. Um, so she's gone there and she thought that she'd just have servants and she'd be able to be up like, you know, have a life of leisure, like by the pool, going to parties, all that kind of stuff. Um, this is in the 1950s and um, her husband's like, no, no, we need to like live authentically and, you know, live like the people who live here. Um, and um, go to you know the souks and the markets and all that kind of stuff. Um, so she goes out with him, and then he like disappears off for a minute, and she's kind of left in this um, market where she doesn't know like where she is or anything, and it's really hot, and she starts having like a panic attack. And then after that, she decides that she's just going to stay in the flat. She doesn't want to really be there. She's too anxious to go out. Um, he's spending all the money that they have, and that's how. The first chapter ends um and they keep alluding to something awful that's happened in the past that she's trying to forget which i guess is what's um referred to on the back a horrific accident and i think that's what separated her from her friend but so from the back her friend lucy appears to already be there although she hasn't appeared in the story yet and i think she's gonna sort of um help alice with her anxiety but then i don't know if she can be trusted so i really enjoyed this so i'm definitely going to keep this one um I think I would have given it away if I hadn't read the first chapter. So this is why this is really nice. So that's a success. So the next one is another one I was given. Um, and this is The Lake of Dreams by Kim Edwards. This is a hardback. So my mum read and loved The Memory Keeper's Daughter, also by Kim Edwards. And she gave me that one. And then she gave me this one um, when she'd read it. But she said it wasn't as good. And this has got really bad reviews on Goodreads. So... Let's just have a look what it's about. So after spending years in a foreign country, Lucy returns to her family's rambling lakeside home. There she finds herself haunted by the curious circumstances of her father's death ten years ago. Sleepless one night and pacing the moonlit hallways of the house, she makes a momentous discovery. Locked in a window seat, she finds a collection of what first appears to be idle curiosities, but each of these objects holds a secret. Okay, so let's give this one a try and see what I think. So, first chapter of this book, well, I think actually, hold on, there's a prologue first, of course, because all of these have a prologue, but the prologue doesn't really make much sense, apart from we know it's the night when her dad died, the main character, and then we're following her, she's in Japan, um, she's with a guy called Yoshi who she met while she was travelling for work um, they've gone to Japan for his work and now she can't find a job and she's feeling a bit lost and lonely so I enjoyed it, there's lots of earthquakes happening minor earthquakes which happen really regularly but when I then went on Goodreads there's so many one star reviews of people saying that this book starts well and then it gets worse that the characters are really unbelievable the dialogue's unbelievable that the mystery isn't really a mystery, that they've tried to include way too many strands in the story, um, that the characters are unrealistic and uninteresting. And so whilst I enjoyed the first bit, because that's how the reviews are, and they're consistently like that, it's not just like a couple of people who said that, it's really unusual to get a good review of this book. So I'm gonna let this one go as well. So, so far I'm doing well. I've unhauled three of the four. So I think next I'm gonna try Little Paris Bookshop by Nina George. So this one is um, an international bestseller, apparently. Um, it's set on a restored barge on the River Seine. Um, Jean Perdu runs a bookshop for a literary apothecary. Um, he has a rare gift for sensing which books will soothe the troubled souls of his customers. The only person he seems able to, unable to cure is himself. Um, and then he goes off to unmoor his floating bookshop and set off for Provence in the search of his past and his beloved. So yeah, I don't know, the cover kind of makes me feel this is like a really sort of um, basic kind of book because I think it's the font, it makes it look like one of those kind of really superficial, overly cheery books. I don't know. So let's try the first chapter and see.
So I wasn't joining at all by the first chapter of this book. It was just about um, a man who I think is the butcher owner who has to go and retrieve a table from a room that he's closed off for 20 odd years because of the memories in the room. And that was it really. Um, when I had a look at the Goodreads reviews, a lot of people are saying it's not at all like a book about books really. It's more of a kind of a book about a romance of a man who had an affair with a married woman or something. And they said it's really like not what it promises on the back at all. Um, and it was disappointing. And I have to say, I just wasn't drawn in by the writing style or anything in the first chapter. So that one's going as well. So I think I'm going to leave it there. I've done five. Um, I've got another pile of a similar amount that I could do, but I won't do more than one video. Um, I think for the next ones, I'll do what I said I was going to do this time and read the audible samples while, listen to the audible samples while doing something else as well. Um, like some knitting or something. So yeah, so I'll be back with another one. Let me know if you've enjoyed this format, um, if you've done this before as well. Um, let me know if you've got any thoughts about the books or generally just any comments, because I love the comments. And um, I'll speak to you soon. Bye!